together. There are a number of announcements that uh, are in the bulletin that I'd like to draw your attention to. One is an announcement from our worship committee concerning Easter flowers. Another is an announcement from our mission and outreach committee concerning the Micah Ministries. Please take a moment sometime today or later on this week and make sure and read those announcements. Also this morning, if you have not already done so, please secure a piece of bread and a cup of juice or wine to take during our communion time as we will be celebrating the sacrament of Holy Communion later on in the service. Our call to worship this morning is from Psalm 65, verses one to four. Praise is rightfully you, rightfully yours, God in Zion. Vows to you will be fulfilled. All humanity will come to you, the one who hears prayer. Iniquities overwhelm me, only you, can atone for our rebellions. And now, please join me as we all say together out loud with one voice, how happy is the one you choose and bring near to live in your courts. We will be satisfied with the goodness of your house, the holiness of your temple. Please pray along silently with me now as I pray our prayer of adoration. Eternal light, shine into our hearts. Eternal goodness, deliver us from evil. Eternal power, be our support. Eternal wisdom, scatter the darkness of our ignorance. Eternal pity, have mercy on us, that with all our heart and mind and strength, we may seek your face and be brought by your infinite mercy to your holy presence. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. And now please join me as we all say our response out loud together. Lord, we adore you. And now over to Laura for our opening hymn. Good morning. You know, as we were, we've been looking at the book of Ruth, we're reminded that we're not the only people that God has brought through times of difficulty. So this hymn reminds us to turn to God. He will feed us. He will support us. He will deliver us. Let us follow him.
Our call to confession this morning is from Matthew chapter 3, verse 1. In those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent, because the kingdom of heaven has drawn near. Please pray along silently with me now as I pray our prayer of confession. Lord Jesus, we want so much to be in control and to have power that we find it hard to admit that we are dependent on you. So often we are faithful only when it suits our purposes. Forgive us, Lord, and help us to remember that you hold not just this moment, but eternity. Amen. Now, please join me as we all say together our response out loud with one voice saying, Lord, have mercy on us. Our assurance of pardon is from 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 15. Hear the good news. The saying is sure and worthy of acceptance that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners. Our hymn is All the Way My Savior Leads Me. time for a moment with children and youth. Our moment today comes from the Heritage Builders, Bible Studies for Preschoolers, Family Night Tool Chest, the Old Testament, Chapter 1, Creation. Our theme for today is God created all things new, the earth, the animals, and me and you. Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 in the Bible says that in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. God also created the world the stars, the plants, the animals, and the people. Now, you gotta remember that God didn't have the internet or movies or social media to look at to know how to form the trees or the plants or the animals or the people. God came up with all that on his own. In fact, God created the whole universe on his own. God's pretty amazing, don't you think? That's why our theme for today is God created all things new, the earth, the animals, and me, and you. Let's pray. 
Dear God, help us to remember that you, God, created all things new, the earth and animals, and all of us. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you please continue to pray along with me as I pray our prayer for illumination? Guide us, O oh God, by your word and spirit, that in your light we may see light, and in your truth find freedom, and in your will discover your peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. So today we're going to continue with our consideration of the book of Ruth. It's the story of Ruth, an account of tragedy and triumph. Because you see, the book of Ruth begins with a terrible tragedy and loss, and it ends with a triumphant hope that points to eternity. In Ruth, we see God provide for people who have no one else to provide for them. And we see God protect people that have no one else to protect them in a dangerous and cruel world. We also see God comfort them and give them hope. In Ruth, we see once again that God's in charge and God has a plan. Not just a plan for the people mentioned in the book of Ruth, but a plan whose impact reaches down through time and across space to us today and on into eternity. As we see God taking care of the people that he will utilize to be the ancestors of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, whose birth we just celebrated and whose death and resurrection we will celebrate in just a few short weeks. In today's passage, we see more of God's plan as we see the hand of God moving in the lives of Naomi and Ruth and Boaz. As we witness a conversation before dawn between Ruth and Boaz in an unlikely place at an unlikely time that will have a dramatic impact on both of their lives. And then we witness another conversation between Ruth and Naomi that will give Ruth advice, guidance, and hope. And so now, listen to the word of the Lord. Our Old Testament reading today is from Ruth chapter 3, verses 14 to 18. So she lay down at his feet till morning, but got up while it was still dark. And Boaz said, Don't let it be known that a woman came to the threshing floor. And he told Ruth, Bring the shawl you're wearing and hold it out. And when she held it out, he shoveled six measures of barley into her shawl, and she went into the town. She went to her mother-in-law, Naomi, who asked her, What happened, my daughter? And Ruth told her everything that the man had done for her. And she said, He gave me six measures of barley, because he said, don't go back to your mother-in-law empty-handed. And Naomi said, my daughter, wait until you find out how things go, for he won't rest unless he resolves this today. Recently, a little dog stayed with his human for seven days and seven nights in sub-freezing temperatures in the Italian Alps. His human had fallen and broken his ankle while he was hiking and could not use his cell phone to call for help because he had no service. He was able to drag himself to a nearby stream to get water so he did not die of thirst. He was rescued on the morning of the seventh day when a search helicopter saw his thermal blanket from the air. The hiker said he was able to survive thanks to the company of his little dog. He didn't give up and neither did his little dog. They both survived through determination and a commitment to not quit. Likewise, today, we see the Lord utilize Ruth and Boaz to help each other in a time of waiting when we see a new day dawning. Now, this would be a good time for you to turn your attention to your sermon notes. You can either pull up maybe a copy that you printed out from what you received an email from the church office on Thursday, or you can pull it up on your favorite device, whatever works best for you. First, we're gonna discover what happened before dawn. Next, we'll see the retelling of the encounter. And finally, we find that he will not rest. Our takeaway for today is never stop following Jesus. First, we'll discover what happened before dawn. Now, if you remember last week, Ruth surprised Boaz with a visit in the middle of the night. 
she had then symbolically proposed that he exercise his right and his responsibility as a kinsman redeemer, a family redeemer, and marry her, thus providing for her to carry on the family name of Elimelech and Malone, and to provide a secure future for both Naomi and Ruth herself. Boaz had agreed, but he pointed out that there was a man who was a closer relative to Elimelech than he was. In order for he and Ruth to marry, that man would have to decline his right and his responsibility as a family redeemer for the land of Elimelech and the protection and provision for Naomi and to marry Ruth. Boaz consents to approach the man in the morning and present the request to him. But it was the middle of the night and nothing could be done until morning. He had told Ruth to lay down and sleep until morning, which she did. Well, now we join the account in progress and it's morning. Ruth gets up while it's still dark. Now, remember, they didn't have smartphones at this time with alarms on them to wake them up. But the literal translation of the Hebrew here means that she awoke before a person could recognize another person that they knew well. That's how dark it still was. Boaz says, don't let anybody know that you came to the threshing floor. Now, the reason for this is kind of obvious. He didn't want any doubt to be cast on Ruth's reputation, or on his own for that matter. And then he tells Ruth to bring her shawl and he puts a large portion of grain in it for her to carry home. Now the scholars believe there are a couple of reasons for this. First, it kind of gives Ruth a cover story and something to hide behind in case she sees somebody on the way home. But secondly, it was typical of Boaz doing what was right to help two widows who were part of his extended family. And it didn't hurt Ruth and Naomi's opinion of him either. For Boaz, though, acting with loving kindness was part of his character. It was a habit. It was also a good encouragement to us that we remember that we should never stop following Jesus. Well, now we hear the retelling of the encounter. When Ruth gets home, of course, Naomi wants to know what happened. Now first, Naomi was probably really worried about Ruth. She may not have even slept a wink that night. Remember, in this time and in this culture, night was a very dangerous, dangerous time. To put it simplistically, good people stayed in at night. Only bad people went out at night. This may have been the first night in an awfully long time that Ruth and Naomi did not sleep under the same roof. Naomi was probably really worried about Ruth. Was she okay? Was she safe? Naomi wants to know every syllable that Ruth and Boaz spoke to each other. What's the situation between the two of you? Are you engaged? Did our plan work? What's going to happen next? Ruth told her everything. Her story was probably a mixture of hope and despair. Yes, he wanted to marry her and provide for Ruth and Naomi. But... But there's another relative that's closer than he is. So all may be lost. She goes on to say, he gave us this grain because he didn't want me to come back to you empty handed. Now, while this may seem insignificant to us, from Naomi's perspective, this is really important. Boaz truly cares for her and he's making this obvious. As we said a moment ago, this was an act of loving kindness by Boaz, and it's part of his character. But it's also an act that is God's way of touching Naomi's pain and giving her hope. Remember, she left Bethlehem in a time of famine. She lost her beloved husband and her two precious children. She was devastated. And she wandered back to Bethlehem in a fog of deep despair. But Ruth's gathering of grain and Boaz's generous gift of food has given her a tangible 
physical help and a symbolic promise for the future that has given her hope. She's gone from tragedy and despair to a triumph and a hope. Never, ever stop following Jesus. Finally, Naomi says, he will not rest. Naomi's response is incredibly wise. She says to Ruth, stay here and wait to find out how things go with Boaz and Keller with the other family redeemer. There's no need to go out. There's nothing you can do anyway. So stay here and pray and trust the Lord. Boaz will not rest until he resolves this today. Naomi has faith in God, and Naomi also has faith in Boaz. Now, we don't know if it's because she knew him before she left Bethlehem in the first place, or if it's because of his loving kindness to her and to Ruth, or if it's because of the retelling that Ruth told her just now about her encounter with him when she mentions Boaz's words in chapter 3, verse 13, speaking of the other family redeemer when she says, well, when Boaz says, he wants to redeem you, that's good. Let him redeem you. But if he does not want to redeem you, then as the Lord lives, I will. Boaz made one of the strongest promises that a follower of the one true God could make. He had basically promised on the life of God himself that he would succeed in redeeming them or die trying. Naomi had faith in God and she had faith in Boaz. And we see once again the hand of God moving to bring together two people, Ruth and Boaz, who he will utilize to be the ancestors of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Boaz had faith in God. Ruth had faith in God. Naomi had faith in God. And that faith was utilized by God to be a part of bringing Jesus into the world to save us from our sins and give us eternal life. Never stop following Jesus. But, you know, it's easy to get discouraged, like Naomi did. Especially during our current COVID-19 crisis. We're actually coming up on the one-year mark of the COVID-19 precautions being put in place. And here at Hartwood, our last Sunday worship service that we had in person in the sanctuary was one year ago tomorrow, March the 8th, 2020. So much has happened since then. However, through the guidance of the Holy Spirit, we have continued to follow Jesus through the whole experience. Our session, our volunteers, our staff have adapted and adjusted to all the changes that we have faced. The Lord has given us strength and comfort and guidance to continue on our quest to follow Jesus. It's not been easy, and we've certainly made our share of mistakes. In fact, at times, it's been right down difficult. But we're still here. And we're still worshiping God in our own little corner of the kingdom, as our sisters and brothers in Christ have been doing right here for over 200 years. As many of us have received our COVID-19 vaccine, we see the hand of God moving in our world and giving us hope, as he did for Naomi. In fact, over 80 million people have received the vaccine as of March the 3rd, according to the CDC. This, along with the CDC report, that there was a 13.5% drop in cases as of February 26, which was little, a little over a week ago. And that, too, continues to give us hope. It's a reminder that we must continue to hold fast to our faith. Don't stop, don't quit, don't get discouraged, and never stop following Jesus. Would you please pray with me? Lord, give us faith in you. 
Give us strength to carry on. Don't let us be discouraged. And never, ever let us stop following you. In your precious name, amen. Our hymn is He Leadeth Me. Westminster Confession, the Lord's Supper, number one. Our Lord Jesus, in the night wherein he was betrayed, instituted the sacrament of his body and blood, called the Lord's Supper, to be observed in his church unto the end of the world, with a perpetual remembrance of the sacrifice of himself in his death, the sealing of all benefits thereof unto true believers, their spiritual nourishment and growth in him, their further engagement in and to all duties which they owe unto him, and to be a bond and a pledge of their communion with him and with each other as members of his mystical body. And now please join me as we all say our response out loud together. Lord, we affirm our faith in you. Please take a moment now, if you have not already done so, and prepare your communion elements. As we come to this sacrament this morning and approach this table symbolically, I want to remind you that this is not a Presbyterian table. It's not a United Methodist table or a Southern Baptist table or a Roman Catholic table. It's a table for all of those who follow Jesus Christ and have claimed him as their Lord and Savior. May the Lord be with you, and may you lift up your hearts to the Lord. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God, because it is right to give thanks and praise to our God. And so now, let us pray. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these your gifts of bread and wine, that the bread we break and the cup we bless may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ. By your Spirit, unite us with the living Christ and with all who are baptized in his name, that we may be one in ministry in every place as this bread is Christ's body for us and send us out to be the body of Christ into the world. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Please take a moment now and lift up your silent prayers to the Lord. Please pray along silently with me now as I pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We give thanks to God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ that on the night before he died, Jesus was in the upper room with his disciples and he took bread and he broke it and he said, this is my body, which is for you. Each time you eat of the bread, do so in remembrance of me. And so now, let us take the bread together. In the same way, he took the cup and said, this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. Each time you drink of the cup, do so in remembrance of me. For each time you eat of the bread and drink of the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he returns once again. And so now, let us take the cup together. Now, please pray along with me as I pray our prayer upon leaving the table. Loving God, you have given us a share in the one bread and one cup, and made us one with Christ. Help us to bring your salvation and joy to the world. We ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In recognition of all the gifts that many of us have given to the church over the last week, we now pray our prayer of dedication. Please pray along silently with me. With grateful hearts, O oh Lord, we come to you bearing our gifts as pledges of our service to your holy kingdom. Let the offering we make be also an offering of ourselves to your holy will. Amen. And now please join me as we all say our response together out loud, saying, Lord, we dedicate our gifts to your kingdom. Our closing hymn is, I Have Decided to Follow Jesus.
And now as our service ends, hear the words of 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 16 and 18. May the Lord himself give you peace, always and in every way. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.